counsel. Justice Thomas? Justice Alito? <clears throat> uh, back to Justice Barrett's questions about what constitutes a proceeding. Uh, so you said a search warrant application would be, uh, that would be a proceeding? Especially if investigations were included, yes. How about if one person is arrested for conspiring to commit an offense and uh, other members of the conspiracy might subsequently be arrested? Would that arrest be a constitute a proceeding? It might indicate that there was an investigation into a conspiracy, and since you need more than one conspirator, I think probably that indicates there's an investigation to other conspirators. You've got something definite, and I think that's what we're really searching for. Is that starting point? Is the machinery on, or is it not? Because it can't be on all the time. That's, I think, our basic premise. But you're, you don't think an investigation in and of itself is a proceeding, right? I don't think it's the same as a proceeding. I think the, the, it could be kind of colloquially. It, it's a, a formal action taken by law enforcement to try to investigate or solve or, or remedy a crime. And so I think the language in the question presented was investigation or proceeding. That treats them differently, so we're happy to do that as well. So in, what about states that don't have grand juries? So if they're investigating that, that's sufficient? I think that would be... Um, fair, especially because if we're saying 1503 is really our heartland here, that's grand jury investigations are included there. If the state doesn't use that, they're still probably doing something perhaps similarly formal even to investigate crimes that could be included because we want to give some effect to the idea this is a categorical approach case. We're not trying to rule out an effective statute here. Uh, if I go back to my earlier hypothetical, so we know the grand jury is sitting on Monday, but maybe that's not this, that crime is not the one that they're going to take up on Monday. Maybe they're not going to take that up for another week or two. Would that matter? I think you would at least have a particular grand jury proceeding in mind, and if it had not quite started and the court wanted to include that as the generic, which I don't think is the best, um, the best reading, that would still require particularity. It might require reasonable foreseeability. And I think it would also bring in the nexus requirement, which is separate and we haven't talked much about here today, but the court gave it a lot of effect in Aguilar, where, of course, there was a proceeding ongoing already, but the actions were not close enough. And so the, the time effect causation type analysis might also give some work to get us out of this anywhere, anytime, all possible justice standard that my friend proposes and to something that's more coherent and within, aligned with the historic core. All right, one last question. Suppose that Congress enacts a statute that prohibits threatening a witness with the specific intent to obstruct a future investigation or proceeding. Would that be an offense relating to the obstruction of justice? I think not under 43S, no even though it refers specifically to obstruction of justice in the text of the statute. That would not relate to the obstruction, to obstruction of justice. Well, it, it might kind of colloquially, maybe under the sentencing guidelines, but I think when you're looking at a statute that was written in 1996 and trying to understand what state offenses fit within that based on what Congress understood those words to mean in 1996, this later affected more broad statute might not do that, no. Thank you. 